to the at-home edition of Rocket League Central. I'm Brody Leaf Exmoor, and I am here to keep you up to date with everything Rocket League. We got a lot of good stuff on the show, like coverage of the EMEA region for IWO in Gridwatch. We take a look at True Neutral and Double Tap, and you know we got all the goodies from the community in the breakout. The summer road trip, that thing we've been covering on the show every single week, is finishing up with the re-release of the Jurassic World Bundle, which is available until July 28th. In the bundle, let's list this out here, you get the Jurassic Jeep Wrangler, Wrangler Wheels, three player banners, a Jurassic Park hard hat topper, three antennas that you're never going to use, and a Wrangler Engine Audio. But the most important thing to get in that shop is a T-Rex Goal Explosion because it is fire. So get on there, do that, then we'll do that after, because we got stuff coming up right now. Moving on, the Intel World Open continues in Gridwatch. Last week, we covered the America Regionals Finals of the Intel World Open, so now it's time to skip across the pond and take a look at who came out on top in the EMEA Finals. That's Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Much like in the Americas, the group stage was a dichotomous affair. While Group A's results were extremely clear-cut, with the UK emerging unscathed and first and Norway losing only to them, Group B was much more tumultuous. France, considered the prospective easy champions by many, stumbled multiple times in the early stage, nearly losing two sets against the Netherlands and Germany, respectively. It was a rare moment of vulnerability for the venerated Team Vitality trio. While they did ultimately come out of the group on top, those close calls called their sure victory into question for some. Those fears were mostly dismissed though once the playoff bracket began, as France managed to defeat Norway in a fairly breezy 3-1 set, though two rounds did go into tight overtimes, with each team taking a win. Tons it in by himself, but it's still France with possession. Five seconds, all that remains for Norway in the upper bracket. Very Peak just gonna spike it down and France comes back. They battle adversity and are moving along. In contrast, the result of the other semifinal match was quite the upset, with the Netherlands snatching momentum from the UK to deal them a runaway 3-1 victory, culminating in a seven and a half minute long overtime in which the UK fought desperately to halt their foe's pressure to no avail. Wins the challenge, got options, and so. Mike Boy in front! There it is! The win. And I was going to say, if Great Britain were to win this overtime, it might be the writing on the wall for the Netherlands, but thankfully enough for themselves, only a lovely pass down, and eventually it was going to have to happen at some point. Those infield passes eventually break the Great Britain defense. They put it accurately where no keeper is there, and Netherlands go through to the upper bracket final. Thus, the upper semifinals was a France versus Netherlands rematch, with a latter team hoping to go all the way this time and do what they just fell short of achieving in the group stage. Unfortunately, for for them, France was back to being on top form by now, and they'd failed to seize even one game as they were blown away in a clean sweep. I, I make the joke all the time, I, I write the score down on my sheet, I, I put 2-1 OT. <laughs> if that didn't go to overtime, I would have been so upset, but it's going to be heartbreak. Six seconds into overtime for the Netherlands. They get swept out of the upper bracket. The Netherlands were bopped down to the lower bracket, where they faced their second rematch in as many rounds. As this time, it was the UK hoping to settle the score and get a second chance at taking down their old rival France in the grand finals. The Brits had certainly learned from their prior loss and fought with renewed ferocity, tying the score 2-2 as the set went into its final round. Alas, they just couldn't go all the way and surrendered game five to the Netherlands with a substantial 4-1 scoreline. The Netherlands stave off the reverse sweep. Great Britain battled valiantly. They gave it their all. They did not go quietly, and they don't go quietly at the end. They finishes with Archie, but it's the Netherlands who get the biggest laugh of all. They get the 3-2 win. And now we are set up, Craftman, for the Netherlands and France part three. It was the Netherlands who had the privilege of facing France at the tournament's end, but the result was very much as many had predicted. Netherlands managed to squeak out a single round, but was crushed in every other game by the season Vitality Squad's unbeatable teamwork, maintaining a dominant scoreline of three to four points ahead of their opponents all the while. France closing in now just a few seconds away from finishing off yet another dominating run 
This time, it's the Intel World Open crown, and it belongs yet again now to France, who win it again. 2021 has been a big year for France, and Vitality specifically, as they continue to rule the Eastern Hemisphere with an iron fist. First, they asserted themselves as the best in Europe in the RLCSX Championships, and now they've moved up to the best in the EMEA. The sky's truly the limit for this team. Basically, I can go. So we got sell. <laughs> so I can basically go and like. Go oh, to, buddy. Go eat a pizza right now. So. Oh my god. Matt? 
Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> oh baby. That's the good stuff. What? Correct. Nice, belle pass, belle pass. Yeah, belle pass. Nice, it's fucking good. Good job. Like something? Moi je te dis, on va, on va clip ça. Je, on va faire un but comme contre Josh Horton demain, ça va être un clip. Um, and Brisk, I think, has been a big part of of allowing his teammates to, to have those opportunities. So keep it up. Keep being selfless. <gasps> keep thinking oh of your teammates. My. And I don't think Mr. Gamer Pone was, <laughs> was expecting to get a goal there. Along the side, won't go for the aerial. Can they get it centered though? That has been plaguing this team. Passes the first defender, but the second is in a good spot to follow through. Oh, no way, Whoa. I do. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this is uh, this is great. Adum just kind of floats down on top of it. Great dunk. He gets that follow up. I don't know if he tried to, but he was he was in the right place at the right time. For me, watching RTS, he's matured and matured very quickly in the RLCS, and now representing Great Britain here in the Intel World Open. But up against it here against Norway, leading the charge for Great Britain, trying to get this centered on oh. target and in! The rookie strikes again! No dramas off the field, but plenty of drama on it. Archie, brilliant play, and I talked about how he can score incredible goals and make incredible saves. Fairy Peak, out of the corner. Deftly around, though. Somehow, Kados read that. that challenge that he jumps for with the reflexes that would make a cat jealous. Look how far Kadoff is out of this play as well. Now down to 15 seconds. Sieb trying to drop it off back to Inferno. They beat the defense and Jonas yes. saves the game. 2-1 still with seven to go. Kadoff looking for another equalizing. Oh. Clutch does it again! Championship Kadoff coming to life, but the setup from Alpha was clinical. Rio yeah, would be great for them, but 3 2 will not cut it, and that's an incredible pass from Rizek. I think it surprised Catalyst even. He couldn't even get around the angle, and we will stay at 0 0 early on. Oh, will we? Alpha, he's got oh. the shot! His 36 shot of the tournament, and he finally scores one. That's gonna feel good for him, and what an epic banger! We got plays and plays and plays. And also, whatever it is we put in the breakout. First up, skeet before you yeet. Great name, by the way. Lulls their opponent to sleep. Now they asked us if that was teasing, I'd say no, since your opponent did let you do that. I'd say it's more mesmerizing, it was hypnotized, like you, you, you tranched them. To, <laughs> they wouldn't move, that was very impressive ball control, I am not gonna lie. I have to admit, that was very, we usually don't see good stuff on the breakout, so congrats for starting us off on that foot. Let's see if uh, Flash Force has what it takes to step it up, because he recreates the most famous goal in Rocket League history. She need this immediately. They've got the kick off in their favor. Kato tries to clear. It is almost there. It just hits the floor. Violet Panzer puts it the long way. And it's almost there. Justin keeps it alive. Turner pulls it there. Bounces it into the corner. And she's still around. Justin is there for the shot. And a two. Two, two. This is Rocket League. Well, it looks like Flash Force did do a good job at showing us something impressive. That field changing. Mid thing, is that like a Bacchus point? How did you do that? That was very impressive. I gotta admit, well done. Uh, even if it's just an editing trick, we're starting this breakout off on a good foot here. Let's 
Let's see if we can switch it up. <laughs> Moving on, the Juggernaut gives us a look at pure chaos. That's what I like to hear. I thought, I didn't think they'd both miss. No! Get it out, Clint! You're just putting us further in time! Ah! Ah! <laughs> 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 I can't breathe after that one. Yeah! <laughs> 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 and we scored off of it. That's a clip for the ages, Jack. You got clip bash. Honestly, I do kind of miss those times. When there wasn't a care in the world and nobody was sweating. It was just pure chaos of never knowing what's going to happen next. Those, those, were, those were the good old days. So remember those very, very fondly, Juggernaut. But our next one here is coming from Gemin Wanzo, who comes up with an incredible read. Okay, I, I, we may have introduced that incorrectly. The most impressive thing about that entire play was the pogo off the wall first. Kids, don't try this at home. It's not always guaranteed you'll bounce the right way but hey good uh, good try and execution from gem and wanzo there on that that pogo in that very very nice very nice finally though we cannot end this breakout here without a little that so calculated so john 88197 is going to provide us with it See, I don't know what pros complain about corner bounces being hard to read. Look, it's easy. John showed us right there. That's all you have to do. It's just make that easy read off the post, flip under it with the pre-flip and get it to send across the field. Easy! Come on, I'm telling you, it's easy. Let's move on, though, while you guys go practice that. Up next, it's all about true neutral in double tap. For years, South America was dominated by players from one country, whose Rocket League mastery seemed to deny unparalleled in the region, Brazil. But all that changed in the year 2020, when a scrappy squad of Argentinian Argonauts and a Chilean champion rose up and defied all conventions to take South America by storm. This is the story of True Neutral, South American Rocket League arbiters of change. First, some background. Brazil has been a dominant force in the South American Rocket League scene before it was even an officially recognized RLCS region. A prime example of this is the 2018 SAM Championship, which was meant to showcase talent from all over the continent, but instead ended up handing the gold, silver, and bronze medals to Brazilian teams composed entirely of Brazilian players. There are a few possible reasons for this. For instance, parts of Brazil have much better internet infrastructure available, making online competitions more feasible versus the 100 plus ping that other countries get even when using the best connections available. But whatever the cause, the results were clear as day. After South America entered the RLCS in Season 7, Brazilian teams shut out the regional three seasons in a row, gatekeeping teams from other countries from even making it into the top four. La pelota en este momento la llevan los chicos de Ability Esports, la tiene que sacar rápidamente Eleven, se la lleva Card desde la pared, poniendo el pase para sus compañeros, le va a pegar otra vez, el pase se produce y gol y gol y gol. In the off-season between Seasons 9 and X, the LATAM Championship was held, a successor to the aforementioned SAM Championship which sought to find out who the best teams in Latin America are. Predictably, the bracket was dominated by Brazilian teams, with one exception. True Neutral was an org base in Argentina, whose Rocket League team had just barely missed out making the top four during the Season 9 regional. Many expected that they experienced similar results here. After all, the runnings included multiple former regional champions. But to everyone's shock, True Neutral didn't just win, they dominated. Emerging from the Swiss stage in top seed and going on to win the grand finals in no time flat. It was the first time in who knows how long that Brazil had been dethroned and a taste of things to come. True Neutral, consisting of Argentinian players Shad and AJG and Chilean player Rays Bull, bore through season X like a wrecking ball, winning multiple events and even two out of three seasonal majors. It was clear that there was a new sheriff in town and they were laying down the law. 
right next to the wall. This is getting almost sentenced here, Chamaco, because there are only 10 seconds left, three goals to score. I think we got the winners defined here. We, we definitely do. There's nothing that Rebel can do. I mean, they did a lot. They definitely did a lot. They, they played so well on that game number four, game number five. For their spectacular efforts, True Neutral earned themselves top seed in the South American Regional Championships, the final proving ground for the surprise champions. Almost poetically, the last team standing between them in unprecedented glory was the best Brazilian squad of the season, Furia, a team composed of the winners of South America Season 7 and 9 regionals. The series first got off to a rough start as Furia stole momentum and made it halfway to match point before True Neutral could even catch their breath. But the underdogs woke up and struck back, winning four sets in a row to seal the deal. Seconds up high is Kyle but he's beaten by a mile on Ray's Bowl. AJG pushes it forward. Some insurance late, he can't find it. Tander flips back around. Final seconds, card, last chance. 72 in the tank, has two options. Which one does he take? He goes underneath, it's blocked off the oh. post and saved by True Neutral. They take the first series. History isn't made that easily, however, as Furia turned the tides in the second series, nearly achieving a shutout with Tien just barely managing to take a single game. It was the moment of truth for the Davids of South America. They had just one chance to take down Goliath. Initially, it seemed like True Neutral had attained their second win, as some crafty playing won them the first two games no problem. But in a devastating inverse of the first series, Furia came from behind to tie things up, leaving the score at 2-2 with only two matches left to go. A tight overtime determined who would snatch momentum for the final stretch, which Tien clinched at just the right time, granting them enough momentum to carry on and win the championship, becoming the first non-Brazilian team to do so. AG pushes it forward. Some insurance late. He can't find it. Tander flips back around. Final seconds. Card. Last chance. 72 in the tank. Has two options. Which one does he take? He goes underneath. It's blocked off the oh. post and saved by True Neutral. And now, obviously, the most important thing to keep your eye on is the fact that True Neutral has moved to North America. They think they got what it takes to take down the rest of North America and the RLCS. We'll see. It's going to be real interesting. We've never seen a full team international roster move like that before. So uh, I'm, I'm excited for the next season of, of RLCS, that's for sure. And I know all the teams in South America that were being dominated by True Neutral are probably also very happy that they don't have to deal with them anymore. But that's all the time we have for today. Thank you guys for watching. You can check out more of our content, of course, on YouTube and on Twitter at Squan State. As I said, thank you so much for watching. And for a little overtime action, here is your weekly backfire.